everyone, welcome back to uh, more uh, unofficial Handmade Hero Mac platform layer. Uh, my name is Ted Bendixson, I'm your host, and uh, we are going to uh, push forward and uh, hopefully finish this darn thing, or at least get uh, pretty darn close. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, where are we now? Like, yes, last time we, we left off with um, uh, going through uh, Clang and doing some kind of kind of really understanding like uh, the custom kind of warning and error messages and being able to respond to those and uh, getting to a place where we're actually comfortable with um, the kinds of error messages that we're getting and sort of how our game or how uh, you know which ones we want to keep which ones we perhaps think at least for the purposes of this project are not particularly instructive and so uh, I think we made some good decisions there, and uh, you know maybe we'll do a little bit of cleanup later. But for now, I, I kind of want to push forward. Um, at this point in actual Handmade Hero, we are roughly around I think like day twenty-one, and day twenty-one is is kind of where Casey nearly falls into a pit of despair about the sound latency <laughs> and so he's on a windows system and apparently his sound card is not stellar <laughs> and so he has to do a number of things to uh to kind of get that up to snuff or at least to handle kind of situations where the sound card is kind of latent and we really uh we actually don't really have so on the mac at least at least so far as what i've been experiencing we don't really have the same kind of problem Casey has. We actually, we we have pretty darn pretty darn good audio latency, and you know with with the, with the kind of code that we've written here, um, you know, I'll just just kind of do a bit of an overview of what's going on here. We've sort of um we sort of invented our own like circular buffer for audio, and uh, and and what we're doing is we're relying on Core Audio's uh, render. So we set up, if you remember when we set up sound, we set up this uh, core audio render callback to actually go over a, um, a circular buffer in memory that we had set up, right? And so as, whenever this thing gets called, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get a number of audio frames and it's gonna pull from our circular buffer. And as it does this, it advances the play cursor in our own circular buffer. And then uh, when our circular buffer gets to the end, it just kind of like wraps back around. So that's that's kind of how that works. Now every frame, we update that circular buffer with a target number of of audio frames that we believe will represent um, enough sound for for a frame, which is about a thirtieth of a second, which is about uh, you know we'll do the calculation, but it's about sixteen hundred uh, audio frames. Okay, so this is the interesting thing. Right, so we know that this is that this is like on time, right? So we know that we're filling this buffer up on time, and we know that we have at least um, less than a frame of audio latency here, right? At least with respect to our circular buffer. So we know that we have less than a frame of audio like latency in the in this like sort of system that we invented. This this circular buffer thing that we came up with that is kind of happening on top of uh, core audio here and this render callback. But if you remember that particular um, video, what I said we don't know is how long it takes for core, so once we, so after this render callback happens, so right, this render callback is gonna happen. And what it's going to do is it's going to pull audio frames from our circular buffer. It's going to pull some amount of audio frames, right? Um, but what we don't know is what's the time difference between when this thing gets called and pulls audio frame uh, audio frames from our circular buffer versus when it gets played on the speaker. Now that would be what we would call the actual audio latency, right? So that that would be um, what you know that that time difference between when this gets called and what you hear, right? So that's what we don't know, and we have reason to believe at least that it's probably sub frame, right? It's probably something like it takes less than a frame for that to happen, and. <clears throat> 
what I wanted to do, this is kind of more of an instructional um, sort of uh, video because what I wanted to do was kind of kind of dive a little bit deeper into that and show where some of these things, uh, where where the documentation is and kind of where what 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 some of this is. So um, how how is it that audio latency? How do we on a Mac, how do we configure audio latency? How do we tell the system um, how much latency do we actually want in our audio? Because you, you know in Handmade Hero, actual Handmade Hero, Casey does um, find a way where even if a sound card is like latent, here's the problem, here's, here's basically the problem, is he has a sound card that on his computer that um, has latency greater than a frame, okay? And if if his if his update uh, loop is only filling up sound for like one frame, then the timing is off and he doesn't have enough sound in the buffer um, by the time uh, by the time it gets rendered. And so you hear it like a skipping and a kind of a popping noise because it's actually, that that card is so latent in picking up and getting sound samples that he his uh, his update loop hasn't gotten called frequently enough for him to fill it up with audio frames and so it kind of it kind of pops it kind of skips that's not the case for us okay we actually have a pretty darn fast sound card or at least I do on this iMac and so what I kind of want to do is is go into um, what is the sound act like what is the sound audio what is the audio latency? Uh, how, do, how can we figure out like what the latency of the card is, or at least the latency, uh, the minimum latency, maximum latency on this system? Because it is configurable. We actually, we actually can um, tell the system to some degree um, uh, how much latency we actually want. So I kind of want to go into that. This took a painful amount of time to research. <laughs> <laughs> but after a while, um, after Googling around a lot, uh, so you, that's the part you didn't see. That's, that's, that's not in the video. Um, what you don't see is this. So this is some documentation from Apple about, uh, yeah, so it's, it's hidden away, right? So like, who's going to know to look for, uh, you know, technical note, TN 2321 power saving during, <laughs> so <laughs> Okay, the key thing to get here though is this, IO buffer size and IO latency. Okay, so the size of the IO buffer is directly related to the latency of the IO system. It is a one-to-one -one relationship. For each sample frame the IO buffer size is increased, there is a corresponding increase of one sample frame more latency. For applications that are sensitive to latency changes, this means that any change to the I.O. buffer size can dramatically affect the user experience, a.k.a. if you're playing a game and you make your buffer size like really large, then it sucks to play, basically. So applications sensitive to changes latency are generally those need to provide an interactive user experience, a.k.a. games, uh, digital audio workstation, blah, 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 latency, okay, teleconferencing, games games, as well as games where sound effects can be played immediately in response to game events. For this class of application, the I.O. buffer size used should be the largest possible buffer without breaking the specific use case requirements for the application. So we're engineers here. What would we say is the specific use case for this application? In other words, if the latency is dependent upon the um, the the buffer size, the the number of audio frames that this that this callback here is gonna is gonna pull from our system, right? If it's dependent on that, what is the what's the maximum number of audio frames we can set this to um, before we start getting a skip? And I did a little bit of math here. So here's what I got. Um, wait, well, actually, you don't want to see that. That's, that is, that turns out to be the actual number of frames that we do have, which we'll get into why we see that. Um, 
So we did, we decided that we that um, we are doing 16-bit uh, interleaved linear PCM audio, uh, which is at uh, 48 kilohertz, which means 48,000 uh, samples per second. So that means that we're in in one second, we are doing um, 48,000 of these audio frames, right? And now. What we have here, you know, again, like our frame rate, so the game's actual frame rate here, right? So that's uh, that's 30 frames per second, right? So that is, so if we want to get um, the number of audio frames that we need to have per uh, per render pass or per, per pass through that loop of uh, input update render, how many audio frames do we need to render there? How many, how much do we need at least? right um, or how much does this um, how frequently or, or what's what's the size of it what's what size does this thing need to be at least in order to uh, to properly um, render a frame or, or what like it, it kind of puts an upper bound um, is what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is it puts an upper bound on what this uh, frame size needs to be right because if it's um, if it's any more than that, then we're, you know now we're not really talking about a frame per se. We're talking about something else. If it's less than that, then that's actually good because then we're getting subframe resolution on our um, audio render callback. Okay. So and then yeah, so this is actually just this thing divided by that number, which is you know sixteen hundred. So it turns out that we need to be able to render at least 1,600 sound frames, sound frames per pass through that loop, right? And so if um, if this thing is if um, so, actually, what's interesting is that the number that gets passed in here is actually actually does represent that number, um, uh, the minimum frame frame size, that latency number. Uh, so that actually is. I'm going to get passed in there. That number of frames gets passed in. So we can actually, one way to do it would be to query it inside of the render callback. I don't really like that because um, inside the render callback, you really, this is, this, this block of code is very special. <laughs> um, this, this block of code is, it's called on, a, you know, it's called on a real time thread. Uh, you know, with respect to the operating system, this is the thing that needs to be real time. Uh, because if you miss a beat at all on sound, it just it, it uh, you miss the timing on sound, uh, it it really screws up everything. So the OS gives special priority to uh, these kinds of callbacks. It gives them kind of like a real time priority, and we want to make sure that when we're in this kind of a function, we're really as efficient as possible. We're not doing things like printing out or calling like. There's a whole, there's a bunch of articles on it, but like basically you want to avoid things like spin locking. You want to avoid things like anything object oriented pretty much because it's just not going to be fast. Um, that kind of stuff you want to avoid here. So we're not doing any of that stuff. We're just, we're really being very efficient about it. So then the question becomes, how do we get this number without, you know, just querying it here, right? And it turns out that there is a way to get that number, and uh, I think we should do that, and then just kind of uh, do a little bit of experimentation around around this. And the idea is not necessarily to come up with an answer um, for the long term for what the game should be, but rather to kind of be instructive and to sort of um, help you understand that this is a knob that you can tweak. And yeah, so th so that that's really to kind of understand like what it means to tweak this particular knob and then also just know that kind of put something in your mind later on saying oh okay well if I really do want to control um, kind of like the sampling rate of this thing then here's how I might do that right so uh, we go back to our max setup audio function right um, and this is kind of where this is kind of where we probably should be doing this kind of thing. So um, it turns out that there is a function that so we have this um, uh, our audio unit this thing sound output audio unit 
there's a way to get that property. So um, there's there's a way to get what the current audio uh, audio frame size is or the the buffer frame size. And the way that we do that, according to the Apple documentation up here, so they just what they have is this. Um, they have a few functions that they've given us, right? And these are just like wrapper functions. So there's really like I don't see why we need to like you know wrap this thing. Like I I don't know. I guess they thought that was cool. I think it's kind of silly because it's like you could just do this like directly. So um, what? So they have a few of them. Um, one of them is get IO buffer frame size range, which is just saying that um, given the system that you're on. Um, what's the minimum frame size that you could set, and then also what's the maximum frame size that you could set. So when it, whenever it does a render pass, um, how many frames is it going to get, etc. Uh, so it'll, it'll if you pass in these two, a minimum and a maximum parameter in your audio unit, then it's going to tell you what those are. I think on mine it was like a minimum of like 14 audio frames and a maximum of like 4,096 audio frames. So that's the range that you can work in. Those are that's like those are the values that you could set, right? So I don't really want to go over that though because that's that's um, you know that, that's just something that we can do if we want to, um, but we probably you know I know what it is on my system and and so um, it might be different on different systems anyway. So we got that, and we also have um, so this this will set it, but then we can also get it. And so getting the IO buffer frame size is actually just, um, we're using some of these uh, audio unit get property, uh, this audio unit get property uh, type function here. So I'm actually just going to copy this. Um, this is just silly because it's like, all right, like you just, you just, this does nothing. I guess it just like gives us an interface, but like it really isn't, it's just like a layer of indirection. It's like, you know, okay, we have like audio unit get property. That's what we actually, that's what we actually want to do. Um, I didn't actually, uh, I didn't copy it. So uh, copy that, right? And then, uh, okay. So, um, you know, this is just, uh, so um, I'm just gonna, you went 32, okay. I don't know, I'll just call it data size. Okay, and then um, so remember we have this like status thing, and that we just use that as we go through here. So, and then um, the audio unit is actually just um, star sound output uh, audio unit. Yeah, that's what that is. Audio unit star sound output audio unit. So we, this we still want this. We still want this. We still want this, and then. Um, out audio frame size so that what we want to do is we want to give that a pointer to I think an unsigned um, um, yeah pointer to an unsigned 32-bit integer so we're gonna call that um, even 32 um, current buffer frame size how's that sound we'll just say zero to start and so then we want to do the address of that current buffer frame size. And then we want to do the address of data size. So there's that. And then um, it's possible that that's going to give us an error. So we want to just like copy some error stuff here. And then like, um, so there was an error. Uh, was it just uh, getting, you know, getting the uh, current buffer frame size, right? Okay, and then um, assuming that there was no error, then what we want to do is, just, all I want to do is I just want to log it. So I just want to know what that is, right? So current um, sound buffer frame size. So yeah, let's do that. Um, and I believe that's uh, percent %u is what you use to do um, unsigned integer. So then we're just going to current buffer frame size, right? So what that's going to do is it's going to tell us like the number of, of audio frames that render callback is going to is going to pull from our uh, circular buffer, right? 
And that'll be instructive. It'll at least let us know. I mean, first of all, we, we know that because we're hearing sound that is not popping or anything like that, we know that it's got to be subframe resolution. But it would be nice to know kind of like what that is. And actually, all of this in Apple's documentation comes in the context of power saving. So as I imagine what's going on here is, um, think about it. If, if you have, um, so, so this thing is, it's, it's pulling audio frames from your sound buffer at um, you know, some, some amount. So you, the operating system's got this real-time thread that is like pulling frames at some frequency, right? And so I would imagine it's much more efficient uh, power-wise if that frame size is large, right? Because if it's large, then it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to you know, uh, stop what it's doing and switch to doing, to rendering your stuff and then switch to something else, right? It doesn't have to do that as frequently. But if it's really, really small, then you can imagine that it's kind of thrashing around a lot. It's like going to this, going to that, go, you know, coming back very, very frequently, right? And so what Apple is basically saying in their documentation is, we want you to have this be as large as possible because that's really going to, um, that's going to use system resources in the best possible way. It's going, to, it's going to be good for power usage. I think a lot of this actually comes in the context of like mobile applications, right? So um, on a mobile device, that's really important because every, the more frequently this thing like thrashes around, rendering like teeny tiny, tiny uh, t amounts of audio frames, right? For sub resolution or whatever. Then uh, the more that thing thrashes, like the the more uh, power is going to get drained from the battery, so that would be a pretty awful thing, you know, for somebody on an iPhone, where if you've told this thing to just like thrash around and then, you know, render this like you know twenty two, like say say it's like rendering like twenty two frames of audio, right, and it like keeps coming back, you know, over and over and over again. That's like that's a lot of that relative to say if I just said, you know what, I need about a re a resolution of like say. 1200 say or 1024 to get my frame rate so that's a that's a much larger frame it's a much larger sound frame size than uh than 22 and so it doesn't have to you know context switch as much that's kind of what i'm getting at here so in any case we're just gonna all we're doing is we're just kind of doing this for instructional purposes we're just trying to figure out um what does ours look like? So I'm gonna do a compile. <laughs> of course. Um, what did I do? Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I cannot just program without errors. All right, so that builds. And what we need to do, of course, is um, open that project. So I'm going to open the project and get to that. Uh, sorry, I just about my, uh, it's kind of annoying because I keep thinking I'm going to like, I'll get into it, that I, I want to solve this problem of like having to like have a new Xcode project every time or having to like say where this executable lies. But I don't want to solve that problem yet, so. Um, okay, so we're going back to uh, this, and then day 22, that's us, and then here's our build directory, okay. All right, and so this is just gonna like log something right away. So I'm just gonna run it, and immediately I'll get my window, and then it's gonna start logging things, All right? So what we care about, yep, yeah, so um, you see this current sound buffer frame size, 512, okay? Now, that's where I got this number from, was just from witnessing what it is on my system and having uh, a way for the, a way to get that number, right? Because before we didn't know what that number was. Could have been small, could have been large, had no idea. Had no idea what that actual latency looked like. So now we know, now we know that it's 512, okay?
So 512 is considerably smaller than this. It's certainly subframe resolution, right? So arguably, um, we could set that to something larger than 512 and still have enough sound, still have enough sound frames um, in, the, in the core audio render callback for us to not have any popping or skipping or anything like that. Arguably, we could. So let's play with that because it's going to be some amount, right? It's going to be some acceptable amount and it's likely not going to be, um, it, it, we probably wouldn't get much more benefit of it being less than 512 because right now we're already experiencing latency that's like less than a frame, right? So no benefit there. Um, the question is, might we get a benefit kind of going in the other direction, like increasing it? So let's just, for the purpose of instruction, see what happens if we set it to exactly the number of sound frames that we need for a 30 frame per second render. Let's see what happens there, and then maybe do like a little bit of reverse engineering and, and kind of see uh, what that, like just ask ourselves, like what does that actually mean, right? So let's do that. Um, and the way that we do that, so that's audio unit get property, right? Um, but what we want is um, audio unit set property. So there's another one that's like set property. And we pass the audio unit. Ooh, I didn't. Uh, Okay, this too. I know it's pedantic. All right, so um, now uh, audio unit set property. So in the documentation that has us um, about frame size global, so we care about that. Uh, so then we want to just pass it a pointer to a 32 bit um, uh, target frame size. So I'll just I'll call that the target like target frame size. Yeah, target sound frame size. I don't know. Sound frame buffer size. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Something. All right, so let's set, let's just set it to sixteen hundred for now and see like kind of what happens, right? That's that's the thinking, right? So we just need to pass like the pointer to that address, and then uh, here we can actually just do size of uh, unsigned thirty two bit integer, and that ought to work. And again, you know, we're gonna have some like it's possible that there could be an error, and we just want to log that, so we'll do that. There was an error setting the sound frame size. Okay. And so that's just going to set it. And then uh, right afterwards, we're just going to have that get logged so we know that it actually got set right to, to the 1600 that we wanted. So I'm going to run that. Let's give it a try. Do you hear that skipping? It's mostly clear, but it kind of skips at the end, right? And arguably the reason that that, that skipping is happening is because there isn't there isn't enough slop here, so to speak. So this thing is going to that that uh, is going to fill up exactly 1,600 uh, sound frames, which is like enough for like a thirtieth of a second of sound, right? But um, it doesn't get it. It doesn't get uh, the how do, how do I put this? The the game's update 
loop or the the a single pass to update render and or update uh, get input update and render and get the sound right um, a single pass to that happens roughly at the same amount of at the same amount of time for the for the 1600 and so this this uh, what we what we really want is a buffer size that's like not at 1600, but is at some number that's less than 1600 that is um, acceptable enough because the timing isn't always going to be perfect as to when core as to when core audio's uh, thread comes and and asks for sound from us, and so we need to give it. A f like a resolution that is just a little, like a little bit lower than um, than what it would need to be for a full frame of audio, if that makes sense. So if we give it, because other otherwise, it, yeah, it, it's uh, it sometimes will get called and it'll pull audio, it'll pull up a, it'll pull a full frames worth, but then our own game loop hasn't um, had enough time to or it hasn't yet gotten to fill up you know that full that full frame so if we set it to something like a little bit uh, less than 1600 and this is kind of it's almost an empirical number so um, it's sort of something that you have to play with I tried a few numbers but I do know that if we set it to something like um, so like let's just try setting it to like 1024 right so that's still sub frame and then the question is you know do we still get uh, the same the same uh, do we get no skipping etc do we still get kind of what we want here so there's no skips yeah so no so I, I have no skips and yet I still feel like like I'm directly controlling the sound. It doesn't feel like there's really any latency or anything like that. So, a thing too is, this kind of gets down to, um, uh, so we're, we're not, and I'm actually gonna leave this here um, at 1024 because it, it still it actually feels like still feels good um, so that's that's twice as much as the original 512 that it started with and that'll probably you know it, it'll conserve power I guess it'll maybe have it so the system isn't really like thrashing around as much if we change our frame rate to something like so maybe I'll say um, you know to do Ted uh, this is or maybe like a note actually uh, well, actually, yeah. So uh, make this dependent on the frame rate, right? Because if suddenly we change our frame, like let's say that we change our frame rate, right now we've got it at 30 frames, right? But if we change our frame rate to like 60 frames, then suddenly uh, 1024 is not going to be enough, right? And so I think maybe Apple goes with the 512 because that's a number that's like going to be lower than um, that. Like 512 would probably be enough if we were rendering at 60 frames to where you wouldn't hear any, you know, you wouldn't hear any pops. Uh, the system would, we would be able to provide our game with enough sound, right? So that's kind of, that's, that's sort of my guess. But, you know, this is kind of an experimental number. So if we find out that you know we change our frame rate, we want to do 60 frames, then we may we may discover that the default 512 um, is not quite enough, uh, and, and that there might still be popping. We might kind of miss we might miss some of what we want. So that is that that's um, that's kind of where where we're left off with that. And so I just kind of wanted to show you um, that that there actually is a sort of dial or a sort of lever that you can push. There's there you know we don't, we're not really fumbling in the dark here. We we do have um, some sense of sort of like what's the time difference between when um, this uh, core audio 
uh, render callback. Um, when this thing gets called, versus uh, when the when the sound actually plays. So if we had um, if we had set and you can do that, you can you can do this actually. You know, if, if we had set, uh, let's say that we had a different kind of an application, like something where um, it was less input driven, something where um, uh, we're just playing a sound file back. So um, like like an MP3 player would be a great example, right? So if we're just doing like an MP3 player, um, people aren't, you know, the, the input update uh, sort of thing there, uh, people aren't going to be as sensitive to, to the latency as to when the sound plays in an application like that, right? Because what they're, they're, they're going to want, like, they're going to want low-ish enough latency, but they're not going to care that much. Um, so if I'm doing like an MP3 player and my sound latency is like, I don't know, three frames. So what would that be for like for three frames? It would be something like, like let's say my sound latency is like, you know, 3200 or 48, uh, like 4800 or something like that. Um, 4800 frames up, you know, sound frames. That, that's probably acceptable for something like for, for an MP3 player because um, I'm really only, all I want is for the sound to start and stop pretty close to when I hit the play and pause button. But, you know, I don't care uh, as much as I would care in a, in a game where um, it's, where it would affect, because I'm like act actively controlling it, it, you know, it affects the feeling of the game if the sound is off. So that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here is this is this is kind of a lever that we can tweak and the reason that you can can tweak it to be something greater than a than um, you know the amount of frames that you would need for like a 30 30 frames a second is because there are other applications where this doesn't matter so much and it's overall better on the operating system overall better on the system in general if you in terms of power savings, other kinds of things, if you set that um, frame size a little bit higher, because um, it's not going to have to like switch or you know context switch as much to give you your um, your frame resolution. I suppose that there's other things that we could do with this. Uh, we might be able to maybe um, if we're if we're sampling input uh, multiple times a frame. So if we have sub subframe uh, input sampling, then that could actually be a really good uh, use case for setting this uh, the sound frames uh, buffer size to be smaller. Um, because then maybe what we do is we uh, and I have to get into that because then maybe what we could do is we could put um, we could put sound responding to input on like a separate thread maybe. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't actually done any of this stuff, but I'm just kind of thinking like out of the box. So like thinking about what are some things that we could do if we wanted, you know, to maybe try and, um, I don't know, like maybe for a beat matching game or for like something that where the latency really is, you know, where it's really key that we have very low sound latency, we'd be able to get even more control and we might be able to use it, use this. So, and another thing too is like not every Mac is the same. So I imagine, I have yet to try this on my laptop. So I don't know what the um, minimum amount of like sound frames, um, uh, minimum minimum sound buffer frame size on a, on a like a Mac laptop is gonna be versus like, or like say like, what is it on an iPhone? I honestly don't know. I imagine that, um, you know, those numbers are a little bit different because it's it's just obviously it's got different hardware. So, you know, this, this is something where um, it allows us to respond to different kinds of platforms, you know, di different kinds of Mac hardware uh, or Apple hardware as we want to. Um, but it seems like overall the default settings, like overall the sound cards are pretty good on these, on, on this computer and other Apple products. 
And so it would like really surprise me, I guess, if by default, like this, uh, the default number, the current number were like over 1600, like that would kind of surprise me. Um, that sound, that would seem, um, seems like, yeah, you just wouldn't be able to hit any kind of timing. So, um, it's a bit of a short video. Um, I just kind of wanted to actually go through that particular explanation because I feel like that was kind of missing. And I think, um, you know, overall this, this particular way of doing things, uh, we may want to kind of investigate it later. Um, but so far it, it seems to be working, uh, just fine. It's it, the, the thing to understand though, is that this is like a bit of a, it's a bit of a liar, <laughs> Uh, just because it's like, we say that this thing has this play cursor, right? And what is that? Well, and I, I'm even, you know, I, I still haven't even fully like thought out. Because um, in actual Handmade Hero, there's there's quite a bit of um, time that's given to uh, visualizing audio, right? And kind of going over that. And that's actually what day 21 and day 22 are. And the reason that Casey needs to try and do that is because he's got this like really latent system. But now I'm kind of wondering, um, you know, uh, what use is this really? So, um, so we have this like, we have this play cursor that kind of represents the, um, the where, what it really represents is where core audio when doing a render pass where it last um, last left off with the amount of audio frames that it that it pulled from our from our circular buffer, that's really what it represents. Because every time this gets called, this play cursor gets advanced, right? So we call that kind of the play cursor, and then um, you know after after that thing advances, then you know depending on the frame size. Um, you know, core audio is then going to play whatever whatever amount of frames, audio frames that was, right? So that's like, I think that's like an additional kind of latency on top of the um, on top of the actual uh, on top of wherever this cursor is. So what I'm what I'm really trying to think about right now, or like trying to solve, is like what, what's a good way to visualize that? Like what would be a useful way to visualize that? So I, I, um, I haven't quite come up with something for that. And I sort of feel like though, for the purpose of the platform layer, just given that um, latency really isn't as much of a problem as it was on Windows, we can kind of table that for later. And I think it would probably be better to like push on to the other parts of this platform layer. So I think it'd be better to push on to um, dynamically loading game code, all those other things. Those are the kinds of things that'll like get you up to a speed where you can follow the series more closely and start to learn more about game development. So I'm going to say that, and also, you know, Casey makes a good point that like this early on, you don't really have a renderer. And so it might be something where later on, um, once you have a renderer, it'd probably be better to go over this. But generally speaking, um, like knowing where the play cursor is in the circular buffer is probably going to be an important thing. Um, you know, being able to kind of hit that timing more closely. But I think just given that right now the latency is pretty good and we know how to control it, um, we can kind of table this for later. So I'm, I'm going to say that, that that's what we're going to do. and. Um, we'll think of a different way to, cause it's, yeah, I mean, play cursor is, is almost right. It's, it's kind of funny because it's like, we're, we're writing to this thing and then, um, yeah, there isn't really like a right. Yeah. It's kind of weird. It's kind of weird because they're like a right cursor doesn't really make a lot of sense on this particular buffer because, um, this cursor only gets advanced like when the render callback happens 
and then our uh, our update loop um, just kind of fills up to a point past that cursor. Um, trying to go back, go back over this. So I'm, I'm just you know trying to um, just going to go over this a little bit more closely because um, we. So we know that we have, um, yeah, so, right. So our play cursor, um, target cursor is just a little bit after, this is about like, um, cause I think target Q bytes we did, that's, um, yeah. So latency sample count is like, um, what do we do? Yeah, so we wanted to be like a fifteenth of a second or something ahead of ahead of that cursor. So that's what we did, um, and then figured out number of samples. And then we figure out number of bytes to write into that sound buffer, just so that the play cursor will always kind of catch up to us wherever we are. I guess we could call where we where we left off, like the the right cursor, whatever. Um, although I'm not really sure what that does for us, I guess. I mean, we, we kind of know that the play cursor always catches up to us. I don't know. Um, yeah, not really sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, because I guess what we could do is we could say, uh, so we have, we've got the byte to lock and the number of bytes to write, right? And so we know how much we want to write into the sound buffer. And then what we do is we write that amount. Um, uh, so after, after we pass the sound buffer over to the game, I oh know, wait, this is actually where we do that. So right here is where we, um, where we do the, yeah, increase the, um, this is where we, no wait, actually wait a second, we, <laughs> uh, this is, I'm sorry, this, this, this is like really hard to wrap, wrap one's head around, so I just have to, um, okay, this is reading from, yeah, the sample out is actually, um, region one, region one, and region two in our sound out, um, sound output which is the that's the one on the on the that's the Mac sound output right sorry sound output yeah that is yeah Mac sound okay good so that's the Mac yeah so um this is our circular buffer so that's that's kind of what I'm trying to say is so region one on the circular buffer, um, we're going to write into that amount for the amount of bytes that we're going to write. And I suppose what we could do is after we did that write, after we did both the writes for region one, region two, we could just have an extra pointer that represents where that left, and that would just be like the right cursor. That's like that's like as far as we like last wrote up to. And then if we wanted to, I think what we could do, um, we could put that, you know, every frame we could like draw a picture of that. And then we would know um, how far up, we, we, would, we would be able to know kind of the spacing between our right cursor and our play cursor. And we could get that spacing to be like really consistent if we wanted to, or we could make it so that there's um, like minimal amount of spacing between the two. I'm not really sure like what what does that get us though? Um, yeah, I have to think about it. Um, but actually knowing like knowing where the, I don't know, yeah, maybe knowing where the play cursor is or something every frame would be really helpful. Um, 
So I have to think more about what we want to do there. But at the very least, um, I feel like I've kind of achieved the purpose of this video, which was to kind of show you um, what the actual, uh, like, what's going on with this core audio render callback and um, how to understand what the latency is there. Like, what does that actually look like? Can you control that latency? Is it, do we for sure know that it's less than a frame? Uh, those kinds of questions. Uh, basically, I wanted to answer the question, um, how, how do we know what the time difference is between when that core audio render callback happens and when we actually hear a sound, right? That's the question that I wanted to answer. And that answer to that question is it's dependent on the buffer size, uh, the, the number of frames that we tell Core Audio to render every time it does a render pass. So if we're saying that that is like, you know, 1600, then that latency is going to be about a frame, right? And if it's like five, you know, if it's, if it's less, if it's 800, then it's like half a frame, right? So that's how we know what that, what that time difference is between when the render callback happens and, and when we hear it. Is it that latency is, is totally dependent on the, the size of the, the frame that's, that's being rendered. I mean, I guess there's, there's a few other things like it's got to go through mixing and some other stages, but more or less like what this documentation says is if you want um, lower latency, then you need to set the frame size to be something smaller. So we know that we have a knob that we can turn there. We know that we have something we can, we can adjust if we want to improve uh, audio performance on Mac. Uh, with respect to games. So um, I think I'm going to table audio visualization for now and possibly return to it later um, in more detail uh, just because right now it's actually working pretty well. We don't really have too much of a problem to solve and I really kind of want to wrap up the series and get people just to a place where they feel um, they feel good about uh, following the series. So that, that's really the goal. And um, I, will, I will see you next time. Uh, obviously support Casey and his work, Hand Me Hero. It's a great project. Tons of stuff to learn. Highly recommend it. It's only $15. You have $15. I am absolutely sure you do. So go spend it. Um, you can support me on Patreon if you would like. Um, I would appreciate that. Um, certainly feels nice to have supporters so that'd be excellent and yeah next next time we i'm reasonably confident we are going to cover um moving the game logic into a separate dynamic library so dynamically loading the game logic there's some really solid reasons why we want to do that and there are a lot of really cool things that we get out of that so uh happy saturday um I'm going to go outside and play in the snow, and I will see you next time.